Hey everyone, this week saw Rishi Sunak depart Downing Street before presumably stopping off at William Hill to collect his winnings and apply for a cushy job overseas where he won't have to pay taxes. He's the sort of person I half expect to have pocketed the good cutlery in the way out if he weren't already extremely wealthy. Anyway, moving into number 10 is Prime Minister Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner has also been very keen to know which house she's going to be getting so she can get her junior minister to sublet her existing house and make sure that all her money similarly gets parked offshore so the tax man won't get his grubby hands on it. In the meantime, a number of Conservative MPs were given this sort of thrashing that probably brought back memories of boarding school for some of them, and the Reform Party also picked up a couple of seats. For a while, I actually thought Nigel Farage was scared of sheep, although it turned out I'd misunderstood a BBC question about Islamophobia. Anyway, all things considered, I doubt much will actually change. The two parties are largely indistinguishable these days, and so we turn to two other elections that will 100% have an impact on Britain's place in the world, those being the elections in France and America. In the US, Joe Biden continues to hold on, although some have commented that maybe he just doesn't like the idea of stepping down, because most of the time when he tries to step down, he makes a stumbling fool of himself. Donald Trump was caught on camera this week calling him, quote, a broken pile of old crap. And I wonder if they'll ever inscribe that eloquent quote on a huge piece of marble in DC. Although this key takeaway here is that Joe Biden survived, despite the desperate struggles going on behind the scenes to somehow replace him. It's highly unlikely we're going to see President Michelle Obama in November, unless he somehow dies in the night, which is a possibility. He is 81 years old after all. And if he did actually die, it might just be a genuine coincidence. It might have nothing to do with the Clintons this time. Honestly, it's actually a shame that he doesn't choose to retire, but then do adverts for the NRA, talking about people taking things from his cold, dead hands, like Charlton Heston used to do. Anyway, closer to home, France continues to treat politics like their football performance in the Euros and have a real battle on the right wing, mostly between people born in France and people born overseas. The whole country really is a tinderbox set to explode and the deception by the media over how bad things really are is no different to the lies they maintained about Joe Biden for the last four years. It's worth noting that since 1789, the French have had three monarchies, two empires, five republics and 15 constitutions, all with the end goals of establishing clear principles of government. Those in turn, by the way, were supported by either the army, the church, the peasantry or sometimes the well-off, depending on what way the wind was blowing. And in honesty, it might just be time for something new again. The Olympics kicks off in a little over three weeks though, in Paris, so let's just hope nobody leaves any of the equipment for the javelin, the shooting or the archery lying about the streets. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe. Bye.